take a little bit of time to, to connect. I just saw you didn't have any guests, so I figured now would be a good time to, to come in. But um, let me turn on my camera for you. Is there anything you want to talk about in particular to start with? No. Just looking. Whatever, no. Okay. Whatever you want to say, whatever you want to argue. Okay. Um, so there was something you said right at the beginning. Um, oh, you said there's no evidence for God. So I think I typed in this com in the comments. So you could you could say that there is no empirical evidence for God. Is is that what you'd claim? Yeah. Well, there's also no evidence at all in any any regards. At all. Okay, that's that's interesting because I mean I, I have seen some arguments saying that there's evidence, but evidence does equ does not equate to proof. Um, would you say that evidence equates to proof or not? No, of course not. Okay, okay, okay. So you don't so you don't think there's any proof, and you're taking it a step further, and you're saying not only is there no proof, but there's also no evidence. Yeah. Do you have any? Okay. Um, well, like I said. What I would give you, um, you know, if you're only accepting empirical evidence, is that the only standard of, uh, of uh, testimonial or s statements you'll accept? I'll accept any, any evidence, anything that qualifies as evidence, which is, to me, any factual data that points to a specific conclusion. Okay. Um, well, I I'm just trying to be weary, not, not trying to get into something that's like confirmation bias. I guess you could just kind of look to the idea that you believe in evolution. Evolution is a fact. However, it's also – it's a theory and a fact. So that takes a once – or I'm sorry. I'm a little bit nervous because you're real popular on here. So I didn't expect to get up, but I wanted to come up and talk to you. Um, so yeah, yeah, my bad. L hold on. Let me take a sec. So I believe in evolution too, theistic evolution, meaning that God had a hand in evolution. Um, so like the father, the father of modern science is um, Sir Isaac Newton, correct? Okay. What's the point here? Okay. Well, I'm just saying that like um, Christianity isn't like antithetical to the scientific method um, because once again, the father of modern science actually was a Christian himself. Yeah, that, that that's not doesn't fall at all. Just because somebody believes in, in God and happened to be a scientist doesn't mean that God is real. Um, Christianity okay. Well, is no. absolutely okay, go ahead. Christianity is absolutely contradictory to to science. Science says science demonstrates that there was no flood, that there was no Adam and Eve, that there are no talking snakes or donkeys. That, yeah. That's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. That's what um, that's what you're allowed to hold to as a Catholic um, as well. So that's why I said we believe in theistic ev evolution. Um, the creation story is clearly um, a myth. It's clearly not an actual um, account of seven little literal days of creation. So uh, maybe you've just like talked to a lot of Protestants, but that's why I was kind of trying to like bring up why like science, you know, the father of modern science. Would, then we take it one step further. The father of the Big Bang theory uh, is that was actually a Catholic priest. So you could say that was confirmation bias because I found that out after I became Christian. So that's why I was like trying not to like, not yeah, trying to like just throw yeah, that out there right in the beginning. But it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. I don't care if they were a Christian. I'm asking. Okay, but you think it contra. Now. Okay, do you, uh, well. I just kind of wanted to at least argue that science and Christianity are not. Um, automatically contending against each other because in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, in Catechism um, 800, oh, hold on, wait. Oh, Catech Catechism 159, it specifically says that faith and science do not contradict, although faith is above reason uh, because God, truth can't contradict truth. So I could get the like the whole thing, but so that's why I just kind of wanted to like hear what you said about that first because I can't prove God. That's a, an unfalsifiable uh, claim on both ends. You can't prove the non-existence of God, and I can't yeah, prove the existence of God. We, we absolutely can. Uh, we can disprove God depending on the claim of God, right? If you claim God is omniscient, but there's we also have free will, there's a contradiction. The problem of evil is a big problem for Christianity. Uh, divine hiddenness. That, that's the steel, man. Well, let's take it one at a time. Don't steamroll me. So, okay, so you said uh, the problem of evil. That's actually – that is the, st uh, the steel man argument against uh, the existence of God. Even I believe St. Thomas Aquinas um, acknowledged that fact. So if you want to go right for the, for the jugular, um, yeah, there's really no good answer to the problem of evil. However, I don't think that the, the idea of free will contradicts – would you say an omniscient God? I want to make sure I'm – Yeah, a God with right. the ability to see the future or know the future. Okay. Can you like? Can you kind of like? Exp okay, so, okay, so 
God predestines no one to go to hell. I'm just I'm just like working through my thoughts out loud. This is my belief. But so that's my belief. God predestines no one to go to hell. That's what it says in the Bible. And God's foreknowledge of our future actions does not um, negate the idea of free will. I know I, I know Danny um, Danny Philtock holds that position as well. Like he was the one who instructed me that just because God knows our future actions, that doesn't negate free will. He might be able to speak on that more than I can. But well. I think it does. Uh, if you th if you think that God knows the future, it it necessarily follows that um, we have to follow what God knows. Our actions must align with God's foreknowledge of the future, such that if God knows I'm going to buy a car today, I don't have a choice but to buy that car. If I don't buy that car, then God was either wrong or isn't omniscient. don't understand how that how's that breaking free will because i don't have a choice i don't have a i don't have a choice a free choice to buy a, to uh to do what i want because god's foreknowledge dictates the future hence i have to follow the i have to my actions must align with god's foreknowledge why do they have to like but how do you know god's foreknowledge how, how would you have any understanding of what god knows about the future of your life well if god's omniscient and the, the right. future is knowable then god knows the future yes no that's true but I'm, I'm saying like how can like i don't understand how you would be aware of that before something happens like so how can you say i'm just i'm really not following i, I want to understand because I, I i really do want to understand your position look, look, do, do you do you think god knows the future yes okay great do you think that we have free will yes not a Calvinist. Okay. So if God knows that I'm going to buy a car tomorrow, okay? In other words, God's knowledge of the future can't be wrong, right? He cannot be wrong. God is always right. And the future must happen. If that's correct, then tomorrow, when tomorrow comes, I'm going to buy the car. I don't have a choice to buy something else. If he I, knows I that you're going to buy, if he knows you're going to buy a car, yeah, I must buy the car. Correct. Well, if he knows you're buying the car, then yes, your free will has already enabled him to understand that you're going to buy the car that that specific point in time. I don't understand how that's negating free will. Maybe maybe run another one by me. I, I'm not. It's, I'm not tracking. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Yeah. So. If I have two choices, between, uh... I'm getting the light so you can see me better. <clears throat> My bad. Okay, I'm here. Yeah, so if I have choices between an apple and an orange, and um, God knows I'm going to pick the apple, can I choose the orange instead? No, but you wouldn't know until you already made the decision. Exactly. I can't, exactly. I, I can't choose otherwise than what God knows I'm going to choose. So I'm tethered. My actions are tethered to God's foreknowledge which means I don't have free will. I just disagree. I don't understand how that, I don't understand where's how there's a QED the, at the end of your argument. Where's the like, contradiction then? I don't know if I can ac adequately explain it, but it's just, it's not following to me why that would negate free will. Like, I really want to know. Like, I really, because, really want to understand. The because the definition of free will means I have cho I have free choice right, over my actions. Hold on a second. Let's, let's make sure that we're on the same page on what the definition of free will is. So whose definition are you using here? Um, Oxford? Well, my definition of free will is the ability to choose any action without constraint. Oh, so we just get to make up definitions for words on like our own personal basis. I didn't know we were getting into like a subjective semantical argument like that. It's not a subjective definition. It's very well. You said my my. Definition. You said my definition. Is it this? Is this the yeah. accepted definition? Well, there's no such thing as accepted definitions, right? We're, when it comes to definitions, they are subjective by inherently. Um, but well, I mean, accepted by a, you know. A, go ahead. My definition of free will, you should also agree to, right? Do you, do you think free will is having the ability to choose what you want without constraint? Um, without, no, 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 that's not at all. No, that's not what it means. Um, 
because without constraint would imply that there's no consequences. Um, and God, the God of no, Abraham, no, 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 you're uh, not is righteous. You're not understanding. So, okay, it, I, okay, let me try. Consequences again. are irrelevant, right? I'm talking about in the <laughs> moment, right? Do I have the ability to choose anything I can if it's logically possible for me to do? You're muted. So sorry, so sorry. I was turning down the static I was singing earlier. But um, I would say, yes, you could choose anything that's logically possible. And God cannot do anything logically inconsistent with his character. So he right, cannot right. lie. Right. So you agreed that with my definition that you, free will means you can do anything that is possible logically, which means oh, well, that okay, it, I didn't I didn't know what you meant by that by like anything possible. I mean, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for like clarifying. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's back to the scenario here. You know, if I'm if I'm going to choose something, like an apple and orange, and God knows I'm going to choose the apple, I don't have the free will to choose the orange. Because God's knowledge of the future, you know, dictates that that event must happen, and I can't choose otherwise. Yeah, you would only know like that. It that literally, it's not like it's not making sense to me because that's so silly. How would you ever know what the foreknowledge was prior to making the decision? Like, well, I literally feel like I'm running into a brick wall. Also, guys that are attacking me in the chat, I said I'm nervous. Please come on, let's not use ad hominems <laughs> in the chat. Yeah, so I don't know what doesn't make sense to you. Um, if an action must occur, right? If there, in other words, God, because God knows it's going to happen, it's going to happen, right? He, God can't fail, so the future must occur. So if God knows I'm going to eat an apple, that has to happen. That action must happen, right? Do you agree? Yeah. Yep. That's a hundred percent. We got so, that far. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So if you agree that I must eat the apple tomorrow, there is no option for me to do otherwise, right? I can't choose the, the orange, right? I can't? Yes, but we cannot know that knowledge. That is only knowledge right. of God. Okay, great. So then you, then you agree with me that we don't have free will to choose otherwise that God knows that I'm going to choose. God's no, you're gaslighting, you're gaslighting me. You're gaslighting me. I'm not, I'm not agreeing with you. Okay, where's the disagreement? I genuinely don't see how that follows. I mean, I've tried to explain two or three times. I guess it's not, okay. it's not why, like, why do you want to run why another? Why doesn't it follow? <laughs> why doesn't it follow? Like, what's the, <sighs> I, I think, I think I already said, like, just because God's, no, God's, no, God's knowledge of the future um, does not, not negate free will. You would have no, you would have no knowledge of that prior to making the decision. Sorry. I think you're just like trying to make yeah. me say the same thing over and over. So maybe yeah, I say something different. So that's not... why I've already answered it. So my knowledge has no relevance to the scenario right i'm talking about god's foreknowledge and you agree with me that god knows the future so that's done yeah. right and yeah. you just agree Give with the water. Me, you just also agree with, with me just now again that god knows future actions must happen and they must happen and i can't choose otherwise so in that scenario how the hell do we have free will by and def the definition of that meaning i can freely choose without constraint how do we have free will if I must choose the action that God knows I'm going to choose? I know. I mean, you don't accept the Bible, but I was at least just looking for the Bible. Oh, okay. Catechism 137 specifically is the one. God predestines no one to go to hell for this. A willful turning away from God, a mortal sin is necessary okay, and persistent in it until the end. Yeah, I don't care about preaching, right? I, I want. It's not preaching. That's the catechism of the Catholic Church. Preaching, I'd be having to tell you what the Bible is. Okay, you're not talking to a Protestant. The Bible is just sacred scripture, and okay, sacred scripture is not, part of sacred you're tradition. Attacking, you're not attacking my argument, right? Like, you have multiple arguments up here, and we're not getting anywhere. I genuinely don't want to engage any further because I think you're just trying to gaslight me into like making yourself seem correct. But I just disagree with the stance, and I genuinely don't okay. think it's logical. I can't, I can't tell you what the contradiction is. I'm not that good of a debater. I told you I am a little bit nervous. I feign like I'm a good okay. debater just to get people to watch. I, I saw you. Okay, well then, bye-bye. Have a good day. Like, I'm sorry you didn't understand my argument. I'm sorry that you couldn't handle it. Hey, what do you got? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I was listening to the conversation about free will. 
I think God gives you free will to make the choices. If you want to, if you want to buy the car, okay. you buy the car. Yeah, I, I don't give a shit, right? I'm asking for evidence in God. Do you have any? Absolutely. Where? Where is it? The greatest evidence in God is what He's done in your life. It's changed your life okay. instantly, instantly. How do you? Okay. How do you know that God changed your life? How do I know? I'll tell you how I know. Okay. I was delivered from alcohol, smoking, a foul sailor's mouth. Uh, you name it. Okay, great, I great. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. A moment now of how, time. Okay, great, great. Now, how do you know that? that these, okay, great. Now, how do you know that these changes were from God and not from yourself? Because I don't think you have the ability to do that yourself in an instant okay. of time. What if I told you that there are atheists who, with, without praying or believing in God, have changed on their own and stopped becoming an alcoholic? I don't think they've changed in an instant of time. What? I don't think that several things in their life all changed in an instant of time. That's not what I said. I said that you can, you can literally change your life on your own. You like, said you could, and I said I have. Okay, great. So then why do you need God? What I need him? No, let me rephrase that. Why is God required for your logic to hold true? Because otherwise it wouldn't have happened, and I would I would continue to do those things. All right. Thank you for begging the question. Have a good day. <laughs> I, I I just I just can't. There has to be age limit here. Like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, what do you got? Your argument earlier didn't make sense. You're like, you said um, you don't have free will because God knows what what choice you're gonna make. He <clears throat> he knows what you're gonna do, but he's not influencing you or uh, making the the decision for you. You're the one. I know that. That's not that wasn't my argument. Okay, so. You have free will. It doesn't matter no, what you decide. No, we don't have free will. That's a claim you just made. But can you can you demonstrate how the argument was wrong? Because you said God knowing what your what decision you're gonna make, that goes against you having free will, right? Yeah. But how is him knowing affect your decision? You're the one making. I never it said cool. that. I never said that there, that God was the, was the the causal mechanism that determines us. But what I'm saying is that this contradiction does hint yeah. to a deterministic nature, where the future is known, and hence we have to follow some law of the universe or law of God that determines us to choose something rather than another thing, in alliance in align in alignment with God's foreknowledge. That's the argument. It's not about. It's not saying that. God is necessarily the causal mechanism of this or the deterministic mechanism. It's saying that there's a connection or correlation and the two are incompatible. Yeah, so God knows the future. You're the one that's going to make the uh, the future come true, but God knows what you're going to do or what decision yeah, you're going to make yeah, because you, he's a part you don't of understand, So you don't understand the argument, right? If God, if the future is known, if it, if the future is set in stone because God knows it, right? Yeah. And that that means that any future actions I take must happen. I don't have the ability to choose otherwise. Because it's already your choice. But my choices are determined by something, because of God's foreknowledge. That's the point. No, he knows the foreknowledge of your choice. He he he's not making the choice, yeah. but he knows what you're gonna okay. do. Let me let me put it this way. If tomorrow I have a choice between eating an apple for breakfast or an yeah. orange, and God yeah. knows, God knows I'm gonna pick the apple. Okay. Yeah, but whose choice would it can be? I, can I choose the orange instead? But if you want the apple and you take the apple, that's your choice. Even if God knows it or I know it, it was, or yeah, Trump sure. knows it. It was my choice, but, when, but it choice. wasn't a free choice. It wasn't freely made. Right? It was determined because God knows the future. But no, you, you made the decision. 
You like, like apples specific. better than oranges, so you chose the apple. But, but God already knew you were going to make that choice because he is a part of you. Yeah, but the decision is the decision is determined to happen because of God's foreknowledge of it, right? I can't choose the orange instead. I have to choose the apple. Bruh, this argument is like a rabbit hole. So we're just going to go back and forth because... Huh? Bro, you make all the decisions. How, how do you not get this? You. How, how do you not understand? This is a very simple argument. God knows the future. The future is set in stone. I can't change it. But it's the future is not made by him, bro. He just knows it. Well, something knows that something is determining the future. Maybe not God necessarily, but something is. That's the point. You, you, the person you are makes the decisions, but he knows everything. So... Okay, let, let's... Okay, why doesn't God exist? You said because of the evil, right? No, there, well, there's no evidence of a God. And, and, and when it comes to the Christian God, that can't exist. It's too stupid to exist. And yeah, the problem of evil, divine hiddenness, all these things, I think, are good arguments against a God. Okay, so you don't believe in the Bible, but even in the Bible, it says God is both good and evil and creates both good and evil. So... Okay, he so you is, think so you think God is evil? Of course, bro. He's divinely good and divinely okay. evil. Okay, great. God yeah. is evil. So God causes kids to be ra raped and g give them cancer. Okay, great. He doesn't um, cause it, bro. That's that's where the free will comes <laughs> in place. You know what I mean? People make the decision. He, yeah, he's, but not, free... he's not here whispering into your ears, hey, do this, do this, do that. No, you make yeah, the but, decision. Yeah, bro. but if God's responsible if God is responsible for the universe. Right? Yeah. He's responsible for everything in the universe. Now, yeah. when it comes to free will, God could have made a world where we have free will, yet no evil occurred, where everybody chooses with their free will a good action, only good actions, such that yeah. there is no evil at all. So but there does not need to be evil in any universe. But he is also evil, bro. So the evil has to exist. That doesn't make any sense. Just because he, he is evil doesn't mean evil has to exist in our world. He's our creator, bro. Everything is is him. So both his sides are going to manifest. So he's going to create both good and evil. Okay. Um, so you're saying so, that God causes, so God is evil such that he causes tsunamis. Does God cause tsunamis? So, yeah, of course. <laughs> so God kills people in tsunamis. Yeah, if he wants to, he's omnipotent, bro. That's what Christians fail to explain to you, bro. He's God. He okay. he can do whatever he wants. Okay. Um. So, what's your evidence of this God? Okay. So the evidence. Let's go back to creation, right? You believe everything was created from nothing, right? No, that's what you believe. You believe one day some magic space daddy got bored and just made an entire universe in six days. That's what you believe. No, but I believe there's a space daddy at least, but you believe the Big Bang just happened, right? Well, you believe God just happened. It's the same thing, right? The universe can be necessary such that everything in it is necessarily had happened, right? One out of one. So let me ask you something. If we die, where are we going? The ground? In, in the ground, and that's it? We're nothing? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you want to happen? You want to go to Magic Canyon and meet Willy Wonka and he'll give you chocolate? I think so that's, a, that's, a, die, that's an emotional thing to believe in. I'm asking for evidence of God, right? Do you have any evidence of God? I mean, I can't give you evidence, bro. You, you have to look for the evidence. Where? Where is it? Meditate, bro. Um, oh, didn't work. If, if, hello, what do you got? Hello, if the Bible is fake, why does it go against the flesh? What the men want, what, what the body wants, it doesn't. The Bible goes exactly with how, what you want and desire, it, right. The Bible was written by ancient goat herders, right, who wanted to control you. And that's what we clearly see in the Bible. We see 
people who control others. And that's what we want. We want control. We want to go to the, uh, the afterlife. We want to go to heaven. We want somebody to care for us like God, right? We want these things. Christianity is in perfect alignment with a child's desires. It's childish. So back in the time when, when the uh, prophets were alive, you're saying they've, they've written those scriptures to control the population. Yeah, wow, no, what's, your what, 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 what's your evidence you got? Why? Why? There must be some truth to it, right? Why, why is no. it talking about the Lord on the, on the, on the earth, but it, there, there's different Lords in the heaven? There's two different things which contradict each other. Why? What? What contradicts each other? What are you talking about? So why does a prophet say it talks about the heaven and the earth? Because many other cultures talked about these things. It doesn't make them true, right? There's all kinds of heavens, all kinds of hells out there, all kinds of worlds that people believe in. It doesn't make them true. So, so let's say God is real, right? How do, back in that time, how do, you, how do you prove that what you saw, which is real in your house, how do you prove it and, and it continue to uh, be proven true? How do you document it? Obviously, you can't pull out a iPhone, know. right? I don't know. That's, that's the problem you have, to, that's, you have to solve, right? The problem is that we have no good reason to believe in a God. There's no evidence of a God. That's your problem, I'm not mine. Why do you believe I'm sure you... Um, uh, hold on a minute. If, if it's true, why... Why are they getting tortured for 40 years after Christ? You know, they're getting the head chopped who, off. Who got, who got tortured? The the prophets, or let's say the followers of Christ. They, they, tortured you know, many the, people. they tortured people for being witches back then. It, like, you're talking about 2,000 years ago where people were literally being crucified for no reason, for bad reasons, right? It was a different time back then. And to, and to say that, oh, this person died therefore god that's a really bad argument because this applies to many different religions and cultures of the time many people died for their beliefs and many people got tortured for their beliefs the mayans the hindus the buddhists <clears throat> the sikhs well that that doesn't that doesn't include christianity so you can't really uh, put it in with christianity why only the that, person why do you think christianity is special why do you think your religion is special it's not it's the same cult as everything else What makes it a cult? You worship a torture device. You worship a cross. That's a torture device. You worship this guy because he shed blood for you. That's a cult. And you pray every day, five times a day. Oh, God, I love you. Save me. Save me. It's a cult. It's psychosis. Now, what's your evidence? Do you for know that? what a symbol is? Yeah, I do. Do know you know what a symbol, symbol is? Now, can you I'm pretty sure that, that's not Can you give us evidence of God? I mean, I can pull up a, a website for you, uh, which is really interesting. If you look at the Noah's Ark on the Mount Ararat, it says that they found human remains, remains that dates out thousands of years ago. Okay, so you're and, telling me they found the Ark. Where is your source that they found the Ark? Look it up on Google. I, I literally right in front of you. Right okay, in front of what's you this? I know, I know you can Google things. I can Google your mom. I can Google anything. I'm asking for scientific sources, right? A source. Well, but it's on it's on the actual news, or like it's it's not on that the fake news. It's on actual documented Fox News. You know, archaeologists went there and they found human remains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fox no. News. No. Okay, no, great. No. So, what source is it? Where is your study? News? Where is the source? Where is the source? BBC News. BBC That's not a News. Source. That's a news site. Where is the scientific source, sir? A study. So you're saying archaeologists, you, you're just going to de deny them? Name one. Name one archaeologist that found the you know what has published is? science on this. Do you, do, you know what, do you know what the meaning of archaeology is? Have a good day, sir. They didn't find the fucking ark. <laughs> Come on. Hello? How old are you? I am 18. What year were you born? 2004 anyways what month were you born what month were you born <laughs> may what month were you born incorrect bye-bye the weakest link goodbye hey what do you ah! have?
That was the greatest argument I've ever heard in my life. Hello? Hello. What do you got? All right. I got something that's going to blow your mind. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Your name's Mike, right? Yeah. All right. Mike, I pray for you, brother. That's it. Oh, my gosh. I pray that you find a miracle. That's all. Okay. I'll, I'll watch grass cover for you. I'll watch penguins uh, talk for you. You're doing things that are wasting your time. Prayer doesn't work. It works as much as coincidence. Hello? Hey, what do you got? Hey, Mike, what's up? Talking snakes, talking donkeys, you actually believe in that stuff? No, that's what you do. That's what you believe in. No, I don't believe in that. I'm just joshing. Can you prove to me that evolution is real? Fossils, DNA, lab experiments, Richard mm. Lenski's experiment with E. coli in the 90s demonstrates speciation. DNA, human chromosome 2, uh, indicates common lineage. Uh, fossil records such as Ashopithecus uh, forensis, uh, forensis what, which is What's the strongest source, uh, or I'm sorry, what's the strongest source and evidence uh, supporting uh, evolution? I just gave you three of them. Yeah, Fossils, well, what's, what's the strongest source? Mind. What is it? You can take a look at Richard Lenski's experiment in the 90s. Richard Lenski, E. coli. In the experiment. 90s? That's pretty outdated. Do you have any fossil <laughs> records? That would be the strongest argument, I believe. Any uh, fossil records? Yeah, Australopithecus afarensis, which is a recent common ancestor with chimps. Oh, Indicate. chimps. Oh, that's a good one. A good one. Uh, what's our genetic similarity to chimps? Everything's similar. Our brains, our physiology, our DNA. We're 99% yeah. identical to them. Okay. Uh, did you know that uh, we have a 98% uh, uh, genetic similarity to bananas? Nope, that's false. It's true. So, it's uh, yeah, I promise it's true. Does that mean oh, that we're bananas? Oh, give me your source on that. I'd love to see it. Sure. All right, and what yeah. kind of DNA are you talking about? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 see, that's the point. It depends on what kind of DNA you're looking at. So just yeah. because we have a similarity yeah. to monkeys doesn't mean that we're monkeys. But it indicates common descent, and we have common descent and lineage with all species on the planet. That's why we do share common lineage with bananas and trees and everything else in the. Uh, in, so in you the admit world. it. So, oh, okay, so you so now you admit that we have. Yes, a common we evolved, and the fact that we share okay. DNA with everything else is evidence we, that we evolved. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, can you please tell me what as what common ancestors we have with the bananas? God, I love to hear this. If you go back about two billion years ago, you see that we share a common ancestry with with bananas when it comes to things like bacteria and, and plants like that. You have to go way far back for that, right? We're talking billions of years ago when sure. most things on the earth were just bacterium. Yeah, agreed. So uh, how, how does something uh, come into existence, right? Uh, does that mean that uh, two different genes come together? Nothing came into existence. Nothing came into existence. That's a good one. What's nothing? What do you What do you mean by that? How does that work? There's no object that came into existence. That doesn't make any sense. What do you mean by that? I'm not talking about objects. I'm just talking about DNA because we're talking about evolution, right? DNA. So, so how things evolve is by changes in DNA, right? Alleles exactly. over time, and that's something we observe in our DNA. Okay. So, um, how did evolution start? What was What was the very first thing? Was it? Uh, uh, the change, or I'm sorry, the chain of evolution. What was the start of that chain? Was it fish? What do you think? So evolution is a chemical process. It didn't start. It's a process. And it applies to all living things. That what was the very existed. first clump of cells? The very, uh, that's the my very, question. There was no first cell. But if you go back to about 4 billion years ago, you see that there were a first population of protocells that existed in the oceans due to lipid molecules, lipid bilayers. And these form in the oceans, as well as things like amyloids, which are just polypeptide chains that are formed into sheets, which can metabolize their own reactants to make their own amino acids. Uh, but these things can become the first metabolism for a cell when they combine together. And that is what we think the first living organism, the first proto-life was. 
And from there, you have a chemical evolution that emerges where these things, uh, and it's called abiogenesis. And from this process, you have DNA emerge from RNA. And from, that, from the first DNA, uh, natural selection took over and everything else came about. Plants, fungi, animals, everything else. And so did we. So the entire species, the entire life on earth was an ever growing thread of genetic changes such that we share common ancestry with all living beings, including bananas. And I know that might sound crazy to you because you don't understand science. Oh, no, no, I understand. Did, I'm just letting you, you I'm just letting you talk fact. because I want you to, to embarrass yourself because my next piece of evidence for you is you've been talking this whole entire time, which is funny because I know everything that you're saying and it still doesn't make any sense because when you get down to it, when you have DNA, you need what? You need two. You need two helixes, right? To combine together. So your whole entire thing is that, oh, yeah, oh, they're called RNA. See, so, R, so activated, sir, happen. sir, they're called RNA. Did you know that activated RNA can become and make DNA? Well, what are you talking about? What species are you talking about? Humans <laughs> so or are you talking okay, about plants? Listen, listen very closely, buddy. The precursors to DNA is RNA, activated RNA. That is okay. a single strand that allowed DNA to emerge and okay. form the double helix that we see today. Okay, DNA can you tell me what bear, uh, just like everything is? else? Okay, can you t okay, that, that's completely fine. I agree with you. Can you please tell me what base pairing is? Yeah, it's just Yeah, it's just all right, go ahead and take it. Yeah. It's just yeah, a chemical it's mixture. Water. It's just a chemical chain of, of nucleotides. Okay. So how does that happen? Can that just happen? So how you how it happens is you have things like polypeptides um, activated with phosphates in clay. Uh, they become ribonucleotides, and these can form the first RNA molecules. They can they can polymerize into RNA. Okay, the fish did all this. No, it's called the chemistry. The fish that we evolved from. It's, it's, it's called chemistry. I, I I understand. I understand. But the fish, do they go through this process, or do do us humans go through? Every this living process? being goes through evolution. It just happens over generation. Okay, the fish. They had a different physiology and DNA to us. Correct. Yes. Yeah. What, what's your point? What, what do you go? The point I think is, you thought you had a point here, but the you point don't. is, there are two. We are two completely different uh, um, humans, or I'm sorry, not not humans. We have two different DNAs and physiologies. So, because we have a genetic similarity to fish, does not mean that we evolved from fish or from monkeys. That's, I never said way, we evolved from the same. The same I, the evolution, sir. Is the this isn't Pokemon Just where because, magic card. Listen, this isn't Pokemon where magic card becomes Gyarados, right? We're talking about Ex genetic changes. That's over you. Generations. You're saying listen, that just because listen, we have listen. a genetic similarity to bananas or monkeys or fish means that we must have. Please, please listen. Please listen. I know you're anxious to get a W, but you don't I'm have not it. Anxious. You're the one over here drinking water. I'm completely. Okay. So when it comes to uh, fish, they were they are different species. Of course, they are different species. But evolution doesn't mean that a fish became a person. It means that over many millions of generations, fish became slowly different, right? Small changes over many, many generations yield massive changes in retrospect. And that's where we are. We are the products of 4 billion years of evolution. And this is something that we observe in the fossil record, in our DNA, and in lab experiments. Now, what is your evidence of your magic space wizard who made us from fucking clay? Go. Okay, first of all, there is no magic space wizard. Just like how I can tell you there's some big, uh, big, bad, like, hairy gorilla give monkey. Give us evidence right? of God or go away. Yeah, yeah. Idiot. So, give me evidence that we derived... I'm sorry, but I know you're mad, but next time when you have a better attitude, you come up and give an argument. Hey, what do you got? <laughs> Hello? Hello?
Keep tapping it live, guys. Keep tapping. Hello. How old are you? Uh, 12. Shit. All right, bye. <laughs> you guys are funny. Hey, what do you got? Hello? If you allow me, I can tell you exactly how... We, we, you gotta Hello? fix your you gotta fix your Wi-Fi. We can't hear you. Okay. Oh God. All right. We okay. We can't hear you, sir. You gotta come back and fix your Wi-Fi. We can't hear you. Hello? We can't hear you, sir. <sighs> Hello? Hello? What do you got? Yeah, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, what do you got? All right, before I start, I just want to say I think you are, like, the smartest human being alive. Just, I'm generally just stating this right now. You are generally incredibly smart. Okay, okay, I don't care, I don't care. What, yeah, what's your, yeah, what's yeah. your You what's could your also, name? like, since you're so smart, you could also, like, suck my cock. Fuck you, Mike, you're literally the biggest. No, okay. Oh, they're so mad. They're so mad. Because I debunked the little sky daddy. Hey, we Weren't got? you mocking Christianity? <laughs> yeah, but I came to... Well, I mock religion because religion mocks us. So, so. How old are you? 26. What year were you born? 1997. Okay, what do you got? So, uh... Uh, which argument are we doing? The whatever the best one you got. Okay. Um. Okay. If God is not real, how 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 is drawings falling off the earth? <laughs> All right. Have a good day. He has a point. Maybe I'll become Christian now. Hey, what's up, man? What do you got? Um, so I want to say first off, I'll 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 take you on the topic on God being imaginary. Um, second, I want to say that I've seen your live stream a couple times, and I noticed one time that you decided to dress up as a Christian and mock Christians, or I don't know if you're just trying to pull in views, if you're into social media okay, flexing. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah, I know you're mad. Can you just? Give I'm us not some mad. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm I'm not mad. You're fine. Um. I would say the first thing I'd like to talk about with God being imaginary is you're a human and you're trying to de explain or debunk something that's outside of human knowledge. So I want to know why you believe that you're smarter than something that you wouldn't even be able to comprehend necessarily. Well, we can comprehend God based on your definition of it, right? If you say that God is a square circle, that's not possible by definition, right? A square cannot be a circle. Hence, that can't be true. It, it, this way... We can say the same with God. If you claim God is entails a logical inconsistency, well, we can say that God can't exist based on this definition that you give us. That's all we can work with, with your definition. Well, that's ne that's necessarily true, except for the fact that we have a you know very discreet and written in stone definition. Great. What is it? It's the definition of everything you can read of a higher power. Um, if you look just going down to molecular structure, which is what you would use since you're an atheist, you, you know, you have faith in science. Um, if you go down to molecular structure, we have positives, negatives, and everything. You have a proton, neutron, okay? If you're able to prove that even to the smallest life form, for every positive, there's a negative, and for every negative, there's a positive, 
then how can you not prove that if there's evil, there's good, which means if there's a devil, there's a God. And that's just basic human knowledge. Well, this is begging the question of, of morality having some kind of separate ontology from the rest of nature. Morality can, can be just a product of our own uh, thoughts, right? a product of our own preferences. Morality does not have to be an, a real thing that exists, right? So when you say that it has to have a negative or positive, it doesn't make any sense, especially when it comes to things like morality. Um, but th that's can not you, true. Not everything has a positive and negative. Make sense? Can you explain why it doesn't make sense rather than just saying it doesn't make sense? I just explained to you. Morality no, does not just... have a separate ontology necessarily. You're... I'm talking about I'm talking about just taking basic just basic two two by two cause and effect. You take one, take two. I'm I'm talking if you take that two di differentiation and you can take it in the concept that there is a negativity, positivity. I'm saying for every counterbalance of everything in this universe, there's one to two. So I'm saying I'm asking you, not morality. I don't know why your eyes are getting big. I'm just asking for you to explain it better. Because well, you know, you, you if I'm invoke, an idiot Christian, you, you, you should invoke, be able to dumb okay, down to my listen, level and explain listen, it. Listen, listen, You invoke morality by saying that for everything that that's good, listen. Everything, makes sense. everything that's good has to have something bad. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but morality isn't a real thing. I'm a moral anti-realist in that sense. I don't think there's any truth about morality. So when it comes to somebody like me who holds this position, it doesn't. It, I could just reject what you're giving me. It's, that's it's true. a true thing to reject. I, because it's not required. It's not required. I, I understand. You're able to. I understand that everybody has their own opinion, and you can. Yeah, I understand. Well, the that. problem. It's not. That's. That's not the problem. The problem is that you also. You also have an opinion that is doesn't get us to God existing. It doesn't give evidence or provide evidence or give credence to God. I. Uh, are you asking for me to explain my God, or are you expect? Yeah. Expect give me? evidence that you're God. Give evidence of my God. Okay, so we can go ahead and start off with the disciples that were martyred, um, that gained no physical or moral benefit of being disciples of Jesus Christ. Um, okay, actually, they all okay, okay, so you made a claim that disciples were martyred. Where's your evidence for that? Uh, anybody that can look up the doctrine of St. Peter. Anybody that wait, can look up okay, the doctrine of, of Matthew. Okay, uh, and, and, and where in the doctrine of Peter and Matthew does it say that these people were martyred for Jesus? Here, I can go ahead and follow. Well, actually, that's exactly why he was executed in the Roman state was because they blamed it on Christians, and he okay. refused He refused to give up Christianity. They murdered okay, him. Okay, so, so number one, give me evidence that these people died for Jesus. And, and more importantly, why does this matter if somebody died for Jesus? People die for Allah. Does that make Allah true? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, I give you credit on that because that is actually something that happens, especially with – uh, Islamic, Islamic extremists as they like to give props to, you know, their God and prophet. But I think the difference between that is you have a prophet. That's cool. You got a cowboy hat. Um, I think the difference between that that's cool is. Um, okay. Okay. Stop yapping now and give us an evidence based argument now. I, I'm not, it, it's hard for me to word it. I'm sorry. I have ADHD. I'm just trying to think. Um, you know, the prophetization of Muhammad, Muhammad was a prophet that specifically said in Next. Come back when you have a good argument. <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> Just get the argument out. Get it out. Hey, what do you got? Yo, can you hear me? How old are you? I am 18. Why do you ask? What year were you born? Hold up. Excuse me? What year were you born? 20... I don't know. Anyways, so... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Do not kill me. Do not kill me. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yeah. Mike. Okay, you can hear me, right? 
Yeah. No, you were asking, um, what is the purpose? Like you're saying, if you woke up in the morning and you had a banana or a orange, what's the purpose, right? No, I, I didn't say that. Well, you were saying like if God has the foreknowledge. Just yeah, the, I, I was trying. I was trying to. I was trying to demonstrate the 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 paradox between free will and omniscience. If you take omniscience to be knowing the future, that's all I was trying to demonstrate. Do, now, do you have an argument for God? I do. I mean, I don't know if you'll exactly understand it. It's just. It doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have free will because God, even if he knows, he exists outside of our time. Do you know what I mean? That, that, that's irrelevant, right? It doesn't matter where God is. I don't care if he's up my ass, right? The problem is that if, if the future is knowable, then it means that the future is guaranteed to happen. Hence, I can't choose to do anything other than the future. Right? What's said in stone? So, so that, that's why I'm asking you for reasons to show that that's not true. And so far, nobody can do it. Okay, let me try to explain this to you the best I can. Um, the thing is, any Christian should be able to answer you right away that there is no evidence of God. That's the number one thing. Because okay. any Christian, they go off faith. That's an easy W for me. I win. No evidence for God. I win. Like, yeah, it, that's a bad thing to to concede that. It's a bad thing. You don't want faith. faith Hello, Mr. Ben. Hello, Mr. Ben Doodle. I'm going to tickle you to know. Like, like, when you say faith, like, we automatically just reject you. Like, no, <laughs> faith is bad. Like, <laughs> hey, what do you got? Hey, I just want to say that you are really rude to your host or your uh, guest. And I think you should honestly conduct your uh, lives better. Oh, go you go take your complaints to Amazon.com, Sarah. Complaints.com, okay? Uh, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for your complaint. Instead of complaining, give an argument. Brother, I knew you were a fake. I knew you were a fake person, bro. You're a deceiver, and you're going to have- Your God's fake, boy. <sighs> going to hell? What? Oh, yeah. Uh, great. Sounds good. What do you got? Like, do people not realize that when you threaten me with hell, it doesn't, I don't budge at all. Like, it doesn't scare me. Like, you're going to go to hell. Okay. Your hell doesn't exist. It's, it's like, you're going to go to Willy Wonka land. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't believe in Willy Wonka. Hey, Yo, what do you hello? got? What do you got? Hello. Hey, I just want to say, it doesn't matter. If you believe or you don't believe, God's real. He doesn't depend on us believing in him. Great, great. So what's your evidence? So how do you know this? How do you know, how do you know that? How do you know that? Because it's, it, this, our faith isn't, it isn't based on seeing, like seen by evidence. It's based on believing just by. Okay. And I believe that your God's not real. Yay. And I went. <laughs> I win! Woohoo! I have faith that God's not real! Yay! Yo, got? hello. How old are you? I'm 16. Alright. I think Barney's on. Sesame Street. Door of the Explorer. Door of the Explorer's on. Hey, what do you got? Yo, yeah, hello? Yeah, what's your argument today? It's not an argument, it's a fact. You realize how foolish you sound going live on TikTok? Sir, you, you, believe in, you believe in talking donkeys, okay? Stop pretending as if I'm the bad guy and give an argument now, please. I never said you were the bad guy, I'm just okay, great. Then give an argument, give an argument for God. Listen, the, the last caller you had, 
If you would listen, you would have learned something. I was a Christian for 20 years. I know what faith means. And guess what? It's useless. Just as you have faith in God, I can have faith in no God. Oh shit, yo, yo. do anything. I'm on the, wait, wait, is this just to start an argument? Or I'm on the same page as you. I agree with you 100%. You're a goat. Hey, what do you got? So what I got, you just, you are absolutely one of the most fucking, like. Wah, wah. Mommy, he said God not real. Ooh, wah. Next. <laughs> Yo, you're oh, a vegan? Ho, oh, oh, oh. What do you got? You're a vegan? Yeah. I think vegans are... Cool, but I do not agree with the diet. It doesn't fit my my life. Yeah, veganism is not a diet. It's an ethical stance. No, it's a diet. No, it's not a I diet. The same a ethical. Diet. I share the same ethical views as you, but I want to consider myself a, a vegan. Okay, great. So you're just being you just realize that you're being hypocritical, then, right? You no. know you're being hypocritical. No, because I think that vegans hold animals to the same standards as as human beings, but I do not agree with that. It's not well, that however, I do acknowledge the, that they have feelings. It's not that we hold them to the same standards. It's just that we recognize that they are morally equivalent to us, equivalent. generally speaking. Yeah, equivalent. That's what I just said. Yeah, I don't yeah, believe in that. Yeah, what's the moral difference between us and the animals? That just we're, we're much more intelligent and we feel much more. And okay. we, have, we have stronger bonds with our families. Okay, so what if there was a person who was mentally challenged? What if? Such that they had no ability to think intelligently would you would that be okay to kill that person okay and an argument uh the outlier does not make the general rule so oh you're gonna pivot and dodge it can you answer that i'm not dodging it no I'm, I'm telling you how arguments okay, work great. so then what is the answer to the hypothetical if there was somebody who was mentally challenged just like you I don't, I don't yeah just like you i don't answer hypotheticals isn't that uh, what you do as well you don't answer I hypotheticals. Do, i do answer hypotheticals by argument all right now, here we go now give you us give me, yeah. Now, can you demonstrate that there's a moral difference between us and the animals? Okay. I'll answer your hypothetical if you agree to answer my hypothetical as well. Sure. Okay, great. Your hypothetical is what exactly? Refer me one more time. If there is a mentally challenged person such that they had the same intelligence level as an animal or a cow or a pig or chicken, would that justify killing that person for food? For food? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for food, yeah. So okay. you think I can just go up to a mentally challenged person and kill them and then eat them? For food. As long as it's for food, yes. Now, can you answer my hypothetical? So I can just eat somebody? Don't kick me out. I, I know your tricks. You're going to kick me out. Are you I'm Jeffrey Dahmer? Are you Jeffrey Dahmer's son? I know. <laughs> hey, look, guys, he's going to kick me out because I, I answered his super hypothetical, which isn't even real. Well, You're going to answer my so hypothetical now? Sure, you can I, I know your tricks, man. Cannibal, bro. I'm not going to debate a fucking cannibal. <laughs> See, this is the reason why I'm vegan, because if you're not, it leads to ridiculous hypocr hypocrisy. Hey, what do you got? L Laura? Lauren? I just wonder why you feel the need to put down people like me who have faith. Uh, you don't have to be here, ma'am. You can you, you can scroll away. <laughs> All right. All right. Guys, I know this might make you upset, but you don't have to be here, right? You don't have to be here if you don't have the courage to ask questions. I'm not trying to make you sad. <laughs> I'm trying to get an argument from you. Ah, uh, hey, okay. This is, this is uh, fun. So for go you're a, you said you're a vegan. Um, what is what is your um, what is your definition of being a vegan? Um, somebody who wants to minimize the death and cruelty of animals as much as practically possible. Okay, so 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 you, you still believe in like that meat is still essential to the diet, though? You, or do you think it's not? No. Well, it's no? not. It's not. It's not. It's not relevant, and it's not essential for our diets. All right. So, 
if if we all stop eating animals, like we just completely stop one hundred percent, how would and, and we just go to a plant based diet? Yep. What what do you, what would happen then? Do you think that would be that would be the ideal? Absolutely, we'd have way less animal cruelty, way less land usage, way more water, way less carbon gas emissions, way better health. All right. Do you know how many farms are currently in the U.S. right now? Are are uh, you in the U.S.? I think it's like way? twenty thousand. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so let's just take let's just take your number twenty thousand. Do you know how many people there are in the U.S. right now? Uh, about three hundred thirty million. All right. So, if if right now, how many of those three hundred thirty million do you think eat meat currently? Probably three hundred million of them. So, if we took all three hundred million of them and we made them all stop eating meat, and they all just everyone convert at the same time and ate only plants. What would happen? What, what what do you think the animals would eat? Well, the animals would eat, will still eat plants, but guess what? We wouldn't bring them into existence. So when you guys kill and torture animals, we don't take them from the wild. We bring them into existence in factories such that we have to have a continuous surplus of food being grown for these animals. That's why if everybody went vegan, we would actually unlock more land, more crops. We would have more food for us. If everybody right. vegan, because but, seventy percent of crops in the world are grown for your animals. Okay, and and I mean that sounds that sounds good. However, in the past we've learned about the dust bowls and how if we farm and we constantly farm out the land, we go into desertification, which can yeah. literally yeah, yeah. Which, which can literally and, ruin and the land. So if you want to stop desertification, go vegan because vegans use less crops. We use less land. Wait, wait, the ve wait, vegans use less crops, use less land. Yeah, you want to source? You, 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 yeah, just, yeah, sure. just, I, so, I, I, I just need you, I just need you to dabble. Sure, this is a, so this is an Oxford peer reviewed study by uh, Oxford. It's called Reducing Foods and Environmental Impacts to Producers and Consumers. And it demonstrates that if everybody were to go vegan, we'd actually save about 75% of land on the planet that's farmable, and we'd be able to feed everybody on the planet. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. We're not talking about the planet. We're talking about just the U.S. But if we okay. do talk about the planet, the, the, same, thing applies. the same thing applies to the U.S. We'd have less, we'd have to grow less crops for for the animals. No, because the, well, well, the planet has a significantly bigger number. You, you know how many people are on the planet, right? Yeah, I, I agree. The planet's bigger than the U.S., but, the, but the, the premise still applies to the United States. Most of the crops we grow in America are fed to the animals, not humans. Yeah, yeah, but if you think about that for a second, if we eat all of the plants, all of us just eat all of the plants, that's 7 billion people eating the plants. That's, see, this is a straw man, because you're not recognizing that we eat less plants than the animals, right? Cows, pigs, they eat way more food than we do, and there's way more of them than us. Did you know that we kill 80 billion animals? In America, we kill like about 10 billion animals per year, right? So wait, wait. they eat way more food than we do. That's Wait. why if we went vegan, we would save more land, save more crops, and be better for the environment and our health and the animals. Wait. It's a win-win. Wait, I don't – wait, wait, wait. You said, you said we kill in America 10 billion animals? Around – I believe it's around 8, maybe 7 or 8 billion. I, I'm, it, not, I'm not exactly sure, but the number is around, around, that, around that number. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to end up looking up a study on that because I haven't looked right. up the entire study up on that. And then I see you said humans caused climate change is a fact. How is that? A, how is that a fact? Oh, sure, because we can measure the amount of energy in, in the Earth in the troposphere, and we can see that it's rising with satellite data. And that you're saying that's based just based on uh, humans and humans alone. Yeah, so we can take a look at the isotopes of carbon that uh, are in the atmosphere, and they come from humans, right? When we emit carbon in, from our gas, from our engines, and from factories, we can trace that gas in the atmosphere. We could observe it, and we can see that it traps heat from the sun, causing the Earth to get warmer. And this is, we know for a fact, we are causing it, and there's thousands of studies about this demonstrating that we are the cause and that the climate is changing drastically. I mean, it seems like you probably have, like, the studies pulled up already, so what... What study? Sure. Do you have a study right now pulled up for it? Sure. So I have a consensus study. It's a meta-analysis um, done by um, Cornell University called Greater Than 99% Consensus on Human-Caused Climate Change in the Peer-Reviewed Scientific Literature. It's a peer-reviewed meta-analysis, and it shows that from a data set of 88,000 climate papers, um, 
99% of them agree that we are causing climate change. Well, okay, so just because a bunch of papers are saying that they agree that we're causing climate change, that innately means that we're causing climate change. Yeah, they that's good evidence. Else. Yeah, that's fucking great evidence that 88,000 scientific peer reviewed that would, papers that wouldn't be, that. That yeah, wouldn't be great evidence, evidence because that wouldn't be great evidence because it's it's more based around a consensus of people agreeing towards that. Yeah, not, it, that's just science, because a bunch of people agree science, upon something it doesn't mean it's true. So, that's how science works, right? We take a look at the evidence, and the evidence is what drives the consensus. Did so, you? Did you? So the fact that there's such a strong consensus means there's strong evidence. So okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. So 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 in the past, and I, I, now I'm I'm just gonna use the top argument you're using there. In the past, there was a great consensus that everyone believed that God, that a lot of people believed God was real, then people were persecuted. You you obviously should know that's this. That's not scientific. That wasn't wait, scientific. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. But you said that's how science works, though. I'm, I'm saying because you said science, that's how science, science works. Science works about on evidence, not somebody's claim. Evidence. No, you you used the consensus study. And you said you said, you, you said this consensus study. I just said, but I, did, I told you that you science didn't. works about the evidence. The evidence is what drives consensus, okay, not I, somebody's hearsay. But 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 I t I told you in like like show me the study that's giving the evidence. Don't show me the study of people being like, oh, we agree. I want the study of, uh, okay, of people. So so okay, great. I can give you the mechanistic studies if you want me to. Yeah, give me give me some uh, give me some of them numbers. I want the numbers, you know. Sure. So uh, I don't know if you know James Henson, who is a very reputable climate scientist, but he recently came out with a study demonstrating that the climate sensitivity is about four point eight degrees Celsius per doubling of CO two in the atmosphere. Um, and this is, uh, the study is called, uh, global, I'm sorry, study is called global warming, um, climate sensitivity. And it demonstrates that if we were to double climate, uh, CO2 in the atmosphere to about 560 PPM, temperatures would ri rise by 4.8 degrees Celsius. And it demonstrates how that happens. You can look at it if you want to. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig up into that later. I don't want to take up too much time because right. obviously you have like <laughs> hella guests kind of come up in here, and plus, right. you know, this is this is really fun. I'm not even gonna hold you. Uh, <laughs> it was just kind of fun uh, coming up here, and then I'm, I'm just looking at um, the God is imaginary one. You said you, you said you were into religion, and you were, you, you had, I, I, I think I caught that. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to see. Were, were you religious at one point or no? Yeah. Do you have an argument though for God? Um, for that, I mean, I believe, I, I, I believe more up in something kind of slightly different, but I, I'm gonna let somebody else argue that I, I'm not, I'm not yeah, too into that. It's been fun. It's been fun talking to you. It's been fun <laughs> getting destroyed by, by me. Joe, right. Mike, my boy, what's up? What do you got? So are you afraid of imaginary things? No. Well, in your bio, it says God fearing American. So if God's imaginary, why do you fear him? <laughs> it's you satire. That, my dude. It's satire. <laughs> Are you serious or you're a troll? Checkmate, 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 checkmate. Check oh, yeah, you really got me there. <laughs> Hello? That's how you win arguments, guys. You just say checkmate. All right, yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah, what do you got? <clears throat> okay, so, yeah. That person named Yogan Fire, like, I just want to add on to, well, I actually have two arguments. I want to add on to what he said earlier. So, remember when you, like, uh, tried to claim that, like, you know, that's how science works. It's based on the consensus of several people gathering quote-unquote evidence, right? Yeah. Okay, do you understand how that argument is circular? No, because if you listened, I said that the evidence is what drives science and it drives the consensus, right? The experts take yeah. a look at the evidence and they draw their conclusions based on the evidence. It's always about the evidence, <laughs> but the consensus... <laughs> okay, all right, C continue, continue. Sorry, that just like made me laugh. Just made me laugh. Just continue. Just continue. Okay, what's the contention? 
What's the problem? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So what's in question, the truth value, is whether what the definition of evidence is, right? And you're saying it's a consensus upon like a, a bunch of professionals, right? So in order to get that consensus, no, wouldn't you need no, to it's, gather, it's, it's, hold it's up, hold up. I'm not done speaking. I'm not done speaking. In order to get that consensus, you would need to grab what? Evidence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like, like, do I have to explain to your chat while you're just why you're just doing what? blatant circular what you, reasoning? What are you say? You have what to. You you just admitted that you have to grab evidence in order to know what evidence is. Yeah, you need evidence to have a consensus. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah, have a good day. You're not worth my time. What? <laughs> what was his point? Does anybody know his point? What? Was, what? I'm confused. Evidence is what drives consensus, right? We take, we, scientists do experiments, they perform methodologies, right? They uh, take a look at the evidence and they draw their conclusions. And that's what the consensus is. It's not that hard. Hey, what do you got? Wait, Mike, what happened before you were Christian? It, what, what made you change? Uh, I read the Bible and realized it was dumb. <laughs> oh, oh, he's... Nigger, 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 nigger. Oh, there it is. The old past, the old Christian love. That's right. Praise Jesus. Beer, guns, and God. <laughs> guns, beer, and God. Hey, what do you got? Bueno. Hello? Hello, sir. Hey, so, why why do you think Christ and God is not real? First off, there's no evidence for it. What do you mean there's no evidence? There's no evidence of a God. There's no data or facts that point to God existing. There's no. Do you not realize that Noah's Ark's been found? The nails of Christ has been found, and where, the robe. The okay, robe. Great. Where is Noah's Ark found? Turkey. Over in Turkey in the Middle East. Okay, great. Can you provide a source for that? Can I provide a source? Look, yeah. Do you have a computer? I do. Where's your source now? <laughs> now, go online and type in Noah's Ark's been found and multiple news articles <laughs> will pop up with scientists confirming that they are... Okay, great. So, you, so go ahead and do that and give me one scientist that demonstrates the Ark was found. I guarantee you, you're going to say Ron Wyatt, who is not an archaeologist. Okay. <clears throat> what about the robe of Jesus Christ that's been found? What about that? First of all, it's a fucking robe. Who gives a shit? It's a piece of clothing. But more importantly, it was dated to the 13th century. It was not Jesus's. It and, was. Uh, it doesn't point out a god. How is, that, how is a robe evidence of a god? It, it was matched to his DNA. Where's his DNA? How did you find his DNA? You have God's DNA? <laughs> like, Everybody has God's DNA in them. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> okay, where where is God in our DNA? What what what, what base? Can, can I ask you something? Were you baptized as anything when you were little? Oh gosh, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Even I'm praying for you. Next. Hey, what do you got? Hey, man, how are you doing? Tired. What do you got? Uh, yeah, I bet, bro. I bet you deal with a lot of like crazy people on here. I just, anyways, I just wanted to like ask you why, because like I don't know, why do you personally deny God? Were you raised Christian or Muslim or anything? Like, why, what's your personal 
thing that you don't I, I don't deny God. I just don't see evidence for it. Um, I, I was raised Christian, but I realized that there's no good reason to believe. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. But, like, personally, I think, you know, as a scientific and logical person myself, I personally think that, like, God and science can go hand in hand, if that makes any sense. Okay, great. So where's the evidence for, uh, for God? Okay, so here's the thing. I don't want to say that I'm proposing, like, a God like Jesus or, like, anything like that. But I do believe in, like, a higher power, right? So personally, I believe in, like, you know, I like, if something is proven scientifically, I 100% believe it. Like, for example, like, evolution. I believe it because there's evidence, right? Now, here's the thing. This is why I believe there's so much, like, you know, like, when you look at the history of the universe and you look at, like, there's so much in the universe. I feel like to say that, like, to deny or okay, to be okay, like, great. There's so much. Just give us one piece of evidence. Just one. Okay. How about the fact that everything aligns so perfectly? Like the fact that we exist, the fact that like there's plants, animals and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm not saying like, here, let me finish. I totally agree that that was, you know, like evolution. We, we you know, I, I definitely believe that, but I believe that like everything is here for a reason and i don't like why would i deny a creator okay okay, okay thank you I, I don't really care i don't give a shit what you believe right you said it you made a claim right. you said a very interesting thing you said everything is perfectly aligned what do yes. you mean by that first of all how would you know that this is a perfect alignment second okay, of all well, when it comes hold on when it comes to the earth we know that people starve to death get great get cancer get killed by a tsunami how is that perfect alignment Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I meant like in terms of like our body structures are perfectly aligned to sustain us on earth and stuff like that. And earth is a habitable planet for us. Like obviously not perfect, but I mean, for us to be created and, you know, us to live in like, uh, like, I don't know what you mean. It's like harmony with like the, like the animals and everything like that. Like, I don't know. It, it just, to me, okay, so, to me it, so it boils down, your argument boils down to this. Everything I exist therefore god right just because okay, well, what's a better exist? explanation what's a better explanation physics right gravity no i think physics physics and gravity go hand in hand okay great i agree so the point is this though we have a naturalistic explanation for why we exist this way right we can, we understand that the big bang occurred we understand that why galaxies formed and stars formed and then earth formed and life formed we have very good valid naturalistic explanations for these things none of which require a god or a man or an agency or a magic wizard to, to actualize. The point is that God is not required for anything we observe to occur. Nothing. There's nothing that was required, and we have good explanations with physics. No, and I, I agree. Like, when you look at, like, the Big Bang Theory and you look at all – the like you know like the creation of galaxies and universes and stuff okay, like great, that great. so so where is your evidence for god where why is god required in this universe can i'm here i'm this is what i'm gonna say i personally don't think god is required i just personally don't deny the fact that a god couldn't create this entire universe now, if you don't need god you have no argument Hello. Hey, what do you got? Uh, we agree on too much. I'm just trying to find something where we can talk about just uh, about the vegan thing. Um, is is there a condition uh, where you might say eating meat is okay? Just imaginary. For example, there was zero impact on climate or there was zero suffering on the sentient being or something like that. Can you imagine a situation where you would say, maybe it's okay to um, eat meat? No, because the, if the animals are, are sentient and alive and we killed them where they don't have to die, that's always going to be wrong to me. If you could find a way to kill an animal without it being sentient or living, <laughs> great, but that's not never going to happen. What about, I, I know they're trying to like grow, for example, meat, you know, maybe with stem cells or something like that, uh, like grow, you know, yeah, beef I, or I, something. I, yes, I think that stem cell research is great. I think we should move towards lab meat. It's not vegan to me, but it's still, it's better than nothing, better than factory farming. But what's your argument here? What's your point? Well, I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's a situation in, w in which you would accept 
like eating meat uh, where it'd be morally no. acceptable? No, I can't think of any except for survival, but that's it. Right. So even even if it's grown, you, you might be OK with that as a better solution. But as an ultimate solution, the, the, the meat being grown, you wouldn't like that. Yeah, I don't That's I don't correct. want to harm animals. I don't want to harm animals. I don't want to kill them. I don't want to do that. So I don't choose it. So do you agree? Yeah, yeah I, I see. So it's there's there's half of the argument is it's impacting uh, the global. No, climate's not irrelevant, right? We're talking about animals. It's about ethics. I don't have pets now. Um, rescuing pets is great. I think it's great, but owning pets for the sake of owning them and breeding them, I think that's wrong. Because a lot of those pets that you guys breed end up in on the streets. They end up dying or being euthanized. You know, and that's just wrong to me. Hey, what do you got? Hey, um, sorry. Is this? I I couldn't read your topic. It's about being vegan. Yeah, all these topics. Which one do you want to discuss? Um, the go vegan. Okay. What do you, what's your argument against it? Well, I guess uh, one question I have is if if we all went vegan, would there be enough land mass to? Um, Absolutely. To feed we, yeah, we we already use most of the land on the earth for animal agriculture. We would have more land if we all went vegan. Okay. So, um, there'd be no animal based product. So what would that do to the U.S. economy for all of the, um, I mean, think about what that yeah, would do. So to... we would just transition over from a plant, uh, animal-based uh, farming to more plant-based farming. And this is already happening across the world, and especially in, the, in Europe. A lot of farmers that farm animals are changing over to plant-based farming, and they're doing fine. And that's what the government should be assisting us with. Okay. So what... What is um, what is your issue with eating meat? It's harming and killing an animal. Okay, so, um, but that doesn't that happen in nature all the time? Yeah, but we're not Tarzan, right? We have stores, we have society, we can make choices, and with choices comes responsibility. Yeah, that's true. Um, I guess I just. Uh, you know, I don't see, I guess, like, in, as far as cattle is concerned, you know, I, you know, I'm not really for herding animals, but like eating steak is something that, you know, a lot of Americans are going to do. And I, think, I, I know, I know, but it's still wrong, right? If you can't demonstrate why it's, if you can't justify killing animals, why the fuck are you doing it? Right? That's my problem. Stop being hypocritical. Right. So either recognize that you're wrong for eating animals or try to point out a justification. Can you do that? What justifies eating animals? Uh, I think eating animals, uh, animal based products and having those things provides an easier way for me to get my nutrients as like an athlete. I think there, being, vegan, there I think, are vegan athletes who are perfectly fine. It's very easy for them to be vegan athletes. There's nothing. How is it easier to be to eat meat? I just feel like you're getting the amount of like I'm not saying you can't get protein from a vegan diet, but like people burning eight thousand calories a day is is there a vegan diet that can sustain that? I, yeah. I really don't know. Again, there are vegan athletes, there are vegan bodybuilders, right? There there are vegans performing at the highest levels. It it, it it's irrelevant because you can get there's pr there's protein shakes you can get as a vegan, right? There's soy protein isolates, there's all kinds of dense forms of protein. You never have to eat meat to get protein. Um, yeah, I guess that, I guess, you know, in terms of like the, the vegan, you know, killing animals, I guess it's hard to, you know, justify it except for the fact that, you know, converting the population to just like, I'm sure if I walked into a place that was next. Hey, what do you got? Um, 
just a few things. So your first one, you're saying God is imaginary. Um, I don't think that's true. Because, I mean, first of all, for him to be imaginary, uh, he would have to kind of see an image behind him, right? So, like, say, for example, like, say if I was, like, five years old and, you know, I told you I have an imaginary friend or I told my psychiatrist or something, I have an imaginary friend, then they would make the association that I am actually seeing a little kid that doesn't exist. And I could probably draw it or something, right? If something's yeah, that's that's the but that's would, the point, would, would, right? Then you're you're would just you say, imagining this. But, See, but look, people don't imagine hold on, God, hold right? On, like, hold on, don't... hold on. If a thousand, if I asked a thousand people what God is to them, I, I would get a thousand different answers. And the problem yeah. is that you'd all have different ideas in your head of what God means to you, what God looks like to you, right? Some people might imagine a black God or a white God or an Asian God, right, or a Hindu God, right? I don't the think people... is that these. People These have an image for God. Things I mean, are I'm not really even not tethered to reality. They're clearly just imaginations that our minds can produce, much like Thor and Spider Man, right? They're not real. So that's why I said they're not real. Gods yeah. are not real. Yeah, true, not real. But I don't think imaginary is the right term. Because you're basing it off of image. What's I, I the don't difference think... between not real and imaginary? What's the difference? Because imaginary, like, there's an image behind it. Like, you could picture an image. There's an image behind no one, things no that one... are not real, too. Like, Spider-Man. It's not real, but there's an image behind it. I mean, you just said it. Like, there's an image behind Spider-Man. He's not real, but everyone... Yeah, thinks... it's not real. It's not real. It's yeah. not real. Just because you can imagine it doesn't make it real. Yes. Great. So, do you have um, evidence for your God or right no? Do you have evidence of God or no? No, I'm no, um, I don't. Okay. Have a good day. Hey, yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, I'm just. Uh, uh, I have a question for you. Um, do we agree that there exist laws that govern all interaction of the elements that dictate our reality? Um, yeah. Okay. So, what initiates the initial interaction between energy and matter in the context of environment, environmental evolution? We mean what? What first interactions? It doesn't make any like, sense. There are no first interactions. Like what programs all these laws of chemistry, biology, and uh, physics? Nothing. Nothing's programming the laws of nature, right? Like. The laws of nature are merely descriptive, right? They're mind-dependent entities that we used to describe. They're languages that we used to describe the universe. They're not in inscribed in the universe in any uh, on ontological way. Mm. Okay, because uh, um, I think that we should not like solely rely on science because science is merely a clever method of observing our biology and our uh, environment to gain a better understanding of our yeah. reality and, and religion is a as a fantasy feel-good thing that is based on faith and zero evidence religions way worse than science um, what do you mean sir you, you believe in talking donkeys right like how the fuck can you compare that to like going to the fucking moon right like that's so much so much more sophisticated than talking donkeys and, and fucking flat earth shit in the Bible and the Quran. Those are dumb books. Science actually fucking works. It gets us this is to the stars. Religion gets us wars. Mm, no, because in, in, in essence, our science is like rooted solely in our sensory receptors combined yeah, with- and that's all we got is our sensory experience. That's all we got, sir. What else do you got? Do you have a sixth sense? Do you have a God sense? Your, your God senses are tingling. We have consciousness. That's part of physics. That's part of our senses. But what comes, what comes first, man or consciousness? Consciousness arises in, in uh, biological things. And most, most animals have consciousness. But how can we claim to comprehend the mystery of the universe and the purpose of our existence solely by relying on science. 
We don't. There might not be a purpose. There might not be a reason why we exist. We might just fucking be here. Why must you insist that we have to have some kind of cosmic importance or some kind of cosmic need that we are the main beneficiaries of the universe, that we are the main characters of the story? No, we are insignificant relative to the rest of the universe. It's empty, void, and darkness. Then you can either cry about this and go, wah, I want God, give me God. Or you can go, wait a minute, this is all we got, our friends, our family, our experience. Let's value this life and not worship magic space daddies who give us promises but nothing in return. Poor guy. All right. I think I'm done. I'm really tired. Um, hopefully, everybody here, go subscribe to my YouTube. I have all my lives on my YouTube. I record them here and I send them to my YouTube. Um, everybody subscribe right now, please. Please. Okay, um, I'm not here to be your friend. True. Well, it's not. I'm not saying that I can't be your friend, but I do lies for a reason, right? It's an activist. I'm an activist here. I care about truth. I care about making people think. You know? Um, I enjoy life. I enjoy science. I enjoy learning. It's an amazing thing to learn. And how could you take it for granted? We live on this, we live here on this one planet with the ability to think about amazing things. Why would you let that go in exchange for some space wizard? who watches and cares about where you put your pee pee and what you eat and what you say and how you pray. I think that's stupid. That's a waste of time. Let's learn about the cosmos. Let's travel. Let's explore the world. Let's discover, let's invent something that changes our lives. Let's invent the cure to cancer. Let's stop war, right? That's something I, I'm after those big ideas. I'm after that. That's what I'm after here we can do it it's not that hard it just takes thinking skills um and religion is a big hindrance on our potential religion and all these harmful notions that we are somehow separate from nature that we are above the animals that's a hindrance to our potential you know, a lot of a lot of good reasons to uh, to not believe in God and to learn, be open. Why can't we learn and believe in God? Because if I asked you, if, is there anything beyond God? You would say no. God is a limit to our thinking because you can't think past it because you're trying to, you're trying to fit in all the puzzle pieces of the, of the universe and you're trying to make it fit with your God narrative, right? It's like building a puzzle. And the first thing you do, you get a couple pieces of the puzzle and what you're doing is you're saying, Oh, the answer is God. That's the answer. But it's like, no, the secular person, on the other hand, is building the puzzle piece by piece and going, what's the answer? Let's figure out the answer. Whereas the religious says, no, nope, I know it. It's God. But what if the puzzle pieces are more amazing than God, more different than the thing you thought it was, right? That's the point. When you believe in God, you stop thinking critically. And you, now you're trying to fit 
every all the puzzle pieces into making it a god, making it be a god. It's wrong. It's it's a big, big scam. Um, in in examples, we see this in people saying, uh, "Well, design God designed it." That's what you're trying to fit in. You're trying to squeeze God into the narrative. You know. What if there's something more amazing out there than God? What a more more wondrous than God? What if there's something out there that's that utterly dwarfs the notion of a God? Something more amazing. The universe is a gigantic mystery. And for you to just cloak it all with God is a big, big scam to me. It's a big, big it's sad. What would it be? I don't know, but it's possible that there's something better out there, more amazing out there, right? It's possible. The mystery is exciting. Yeah, we don't know the answers, but that's what makes it exciting to be alive, right? That we're always looking for new things and new ideas. That's amazing. Um, whereas when you believe in God, all the magic goes away. All the beauty of reality goes away. Because now everything you see is God. God did it. The trees, God did it. Consciousness, God did it. That sucks away the beauty from reality. When the truth could be something even more beautiful, even more amazing and wondrous. Which it typically is. Almost every time we learn something in science, it's always something that defies our intuitions. Almost every time. Relativity, the idea that time can slow or speed up depending on your velocity or depending on your gravity. That's counterintuitive. The idea that time exists in all, simultaneously in all directions just as space does. And just as space is infinite, so can time be infinite. That is mind-bending. That is not intuitive, but it's true. The idea that gravity is... The warping of space-time. And we're traversing these geodesics in a four-dimensional reality. And gravity is the curvature, the seemingly curvature of objects. That's amazing. It's true. But it's counterintuitive. The, these are big ideas. And uh, the point is that there could be something even more amazing out there that we have to continuously discover. And when you say God did it, it sucks away that endeavor, that journey. It stops it. Relationship, not religion. Well, anybody can have a relationship, right? I can, I can imagine Bobby have a relationship with Bobby. It's imaginary, but it's not real. It doesn't do me any good. It feels good, yeah. Hey, Bobby, I love you. Like, okay, it feels good in your tummy, but it's not true. It's not real. I'm after what's true, right? It, people are often emotionally motivated. They are driven by their emotions. They want to feel good. I, I understand that. Life is hard. Life sucks sometimes. It's scary. Right? Losing family. It's scary. It sucks. But don't succumb to those emotions. When it comes to the truth. Because oftentimes we get sucked into this wormhole where... All we think about are things that we want to believe and not the truth. That's the problem. When you stop, when you let, when you detach yourself from these emotional notions of God and heaven, you start to think better and more clearly about the world. Yeah, all these expectations about where you go when you die, right? Where do I go when I die? Uh, 
Where's God, right? These are, these are expectations you're placing upon reality. They're getting in your way. They're, they're muddying up your mind. And you're, you're, you're confusing yourself when you get rid of all those expectations and you start from square one and from scratch and you recognize that everything you learn is a, another piece of the puzzle. Um, instead of pretending the puzzle is completed before you start it. That's all I'm saying. But there's, there's benefit in thinking critically. That's all. Only through God I have meaning. That's sad. That's sad to me. That the only thing that gives you meaning in your life is this imaginary friend that you think exists, that you hope and wish and pray exist. And that's the only way you get meaning out of your life. That's sad to me. Because not only do I find meaning in many other things like learning and experiences and nature, but I can make my own meaning. I, it emanates from me. I can generate meaning for others. I can help people and generate meaning on my own terms. Think about that. We can author purpose. We can make it. We can change things. We can do amazing things. Whereas when you believe in God, you're a slave to his purpose, right? God gives you a purpose. You're given a purpose, like you're given an order. Purpose isn't orderly. A purpose isn't an order or a command. It's something we produce to me. And that's a more beautiful, pure way of obtaining purpose than pretending that you have to wait and sit there and look up there for, to wait for it to get to you. That's sad. I can make it. I can do it now. I can do something amazing and help other people and I can generate purpose. And I know there's so much hate in the comments. I understand that. I enjoyed the hate. But don't... All I'm saying is think more. It's not about me, right? You're focused on me, but it's not about me. It's about thinking. It's about the goal of truth, right? The goal is truth. How do we get there? That's the big... That's the question you have to ask yourself. How do we know what's true? How do you learn what the truth is? And science seems to be a great method to truth. It works. Whereas religion doesn't 